the tenth year of Nero's reign. Caius Petronius to Marcus Vinicius, dearest nephew, your last letter finally speaks of your return. I pray that three years of war have not altered you too much. Be prepared to find Rome changed. Nero has turned Seneca away. He has chosen to govern alone. People live in fear, holding their breath. Diviners read the signs of fate everywhere. Something horrendous, they say, hovers over us, for Rome has lost the favor of the gods. The oracle. Visit the oracle. Come visit the oracle. <coughs> I often ask myself how Rome strikes one who has been away for some time. We who live here have lost the thrill of surprise. We're not even aware of being so many. Over a million, it seems, amassed in so small a space. It's almost impossible to run into a thoroughbred Roman as was the saying once. Not that it displeases me, however. Interested in an Arabian horse? Who are you? Answer. You interested or not? I wasn't expecting a boy. So? So I'm interested if it's a black horse with a white blaze. Wait. Come. Here for the black horse. <laughs> 
You're Ephraim? Yes. Is it a fair trade? Let's go. We have to reach the wall of Flavius. What was his voice like, Master? What, what his voice was like? Well, that's very hard to describe. You see, there was... There was something in the voice of Jesus that... Uh, uh, yes, there was... There was violence in it. Something that forced you to listen to him. He would speak to the crowd, but it seemed he was speaking only to you. And this violent voice of his forced its way into your mind and touched your heart and opened your eyes as if they had been blind until then. Master Lilla says that I... I don't believe it. That you, in a moment of greatest danger, I know it's not true. Still, he says that you denied the name of Jesus. It's true. I said I didn't know him. I even swore an oath that I did not know Jesus, but it, it wasn't me that denied his name. It, it was my fear of death. Yes, my fear of death. Everything in those days seemed to happen in answer to a power stronger than we were. He came to me that night, and he said to me, Peter, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And that's what happened, as his very words had said. There's Peter. Caius Petronius to Aeneas Seneca. In your letter, you speak of encounters and discussions with the heads of a new religious sect. You say we'd do well to listen to these people, for they shed new light on the writings of the followers of Moses, writings which you had given me to read. Let me know if I can meet them. I've always been fascinated by what is new and esoteric. Yeah, these are all the scrolls I've managed to collect. They are eyewitness accounts of those who heard and recalled the word of Jesus. These are also copies of scrolls that belong to Thomas. He asks, Peter, that you compare what he's written with your own recollections, and that you mark right down everything you saw and heard. Matthew sends word that he has also written something, but it's still incomplete, oh. relying on memory. Matthew has a good memory, a tax collector's memory. What does this say? Go, therefore, and teach ye all nations, baptizing, baptizing them. them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. Almost the same words spoken by Jesus. Barnabas sends word from Antioch that Roman soldiers, in their contempt, have invented a name for the brothers of our communities. They call us Christians. Christians? Christians? This is also a sign, like so many others that appear on the earth and in the heavens, that we Christians must prepare ourselves like soldiers when war is approaching. discordant climate of the house of the sun, it neither rises nor sets. It is domiciled in Mercury and exiled in Mars, simultaneous exaltation and fall in Saturn. Fabulous. That's enough. I need light. More light. I 
shall never understand these Chaldean symbols. Yet I sense danger. Babylus, I want to see clearly. Hide nothing from me. Make me understand. As you will. Be it known that the stars reveal signs of peril for you. If you wish to ward off these ill omens, then beware of an enemy among friends. Numbers 8, 40, and 70 are to be avoided as are early morning crowds. Crush the serpent's head lest its venom reach your hand. Other comets have appeared in the skies and their influence has always wrought havoc on the mighty. They foretell a change of rule. A change of rule? Yes. The comet star signifies a change of rule. There now. This is the right shade. A comet star cannot be less than perfect. Are you sure you have no need of me? Yes, you may go. But, Lydia. Thank you, Ursus. But I told you already, I'm neither hungry nor thirsty. I only want to continue working. I know, but It's there's... my fault. Three years of war have made a barbarian of me. This man had told me you didn't want to be disturbed. A uh, true breach of Roman manners. Consider me uncivilized. The tribune, Marcus Vinicius, has come back from the front on the Parthian border, and he carries a message which he must deliver personally on the part of his commander, Domitius Corbulo, for the general, Aulus Plautius. My father's in Rome at the Senate. If you hurry, you may still find him there, Marcus Vinicius. No, I'll wait from here. Then this house is yours. Tribune, please accept the bread and salt of this house. Ah. Hmm. Um, as a rule, mosaics usually depict some scene from mythology. Mm-hmm. As a rule. Let's see, then. The man is Vulcan, the woman... The goddess Thetis. And the infant is their son, the hero Achilles. No. No? No. Mythology doesn't interest me. It's also trite. Love and psyche. You see them everywhere. Perhaps you prefer history. Yes. Something that really took place. Such as? Well, that could be Dido and Aeneas taking refuge in a cave during a storm. And the child between them could be a configuration of Eros, the god of love, who unites. That day, said the poet, was the first step towards death, the prime cause of all woes. That's what Virgil wrote about Dido. Mm -hmm. But this event is the prime cause of salvation. Salvation from what? I don't understand. It's the birth of a king. A king born in a cave? My parents. You don't and seem so to I'm recognize me. I'm Marcus Vinicius, nephew of Caius Petronius. Ah, <laughs> I remembered a boy, and now I see a grown soldier. He carries a message from his commander, and it must be important. He chose to wait and deliver it to you personally. They're getting away. Catch every last one of them and put them back in the chicken coop. Hurry, hurry. There, and there. Who Pomponia Gracina really is eludes even us who have known her throughout the years. It's as if something mysterious suddenly came over her one day. I can't tell what is behind her look of serene solitude, but certainly it attracts me. Marcus, this is a letter I've written to your uncle. Aulus Plotius to Caius Petronius, through the kindness of your nephew, Marcus Vinicius, I have received a message from a mutual friend. It mentions a supper in the house of Paizo on the eve of the calends of the next month. Commander Corbulo urges me not to miss it because he says they also will serve some extraordinary oysters. Before accepting, however, I want to be sure you will also be present as I know how precisely you can distinguish a refined dish from uh, 
merely gluttonous meals. Keep well. I'll deliver it tonight. Yes, Marcus, I sold the house on the Palatine. It's much too large for a single man and much too close to the Imperial Palace. Here, we're almost in the country. I wouldn't mind being relegated to a house in the country like this. <laughs> Marcus Vinicius, my nephew. As of today, this will also be his house. It's difficult for me to imagine this house without Eunice. She's the slave who tends to my needs which she always manages to foresee before I can express them. And I often thought if one day Nero ordered that I cut my veins, I want her to be the last view I take with me. <laughs> At the front, they say, Nero can't do without you. Nero. Nero's like Rome, everything and the opposite of everything. In order to survive, you must learn the rules of the game. Do you know why Aulus Plautius sends me an invitation to Paizo's house and asks that I taste the exquisite oysters that will be served there? To make sure you'll be present. No, to make sure of his life. You see, Nero is terrified by the comet, by evil omens. He's afraid of a conspiracy and sees enemies everywhere. Aulus thinks that if I'm at that supper, then Nero won't have any suspicions. Aulus thinks he knows the rules, but he's quite mistaken. Then you're not going to Paizo's house? No, I don't think so. Marcus, I'd say to forget you ever delivered this letter. <laughs> Mopsis is here waiting for you. Caius Petronius to Eunice. Eunice, I jotted down a few thoughts last night. See if you could decipher them. Thank you. Well then, it is not common for one to observe the birth of a new sentiment in others. What Marcus is going through at present is a blind area of sorts. The edges and features of things struggle to come to the fore. Perhaps that is why Marcus spoke of descending in the sanctuary of Mopsus. People who crowd sanctuaries or consult oracles, who take part in the rites of Sibel and Mitra, are asking, in truth, something very elementary, to see clearly within themselves. Gods have many names, but only one is the name of God. Discover that name, and love will change your life. Discover that name. And love will change your life. There! Help me, O oh gods of Rome! Six! And six twelve, the highest number! <laughs> well, thank you, little gods of Rome. And thanks to the god of of Plautus, to the god of barbers, the god of thieves, the god of gravediggers, the god of tavern keepers. There! Six! Six! 
Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. Thank you, the god of mirror makers, the god of rope walkers, the god... Give you another god, an important one, Petronius. Aye. Oh, eh? Name a god. God among gods. Well, none occurred to me at the moment. Yourself, Caesar. Good for you, Tigellinus. You're rather short on fantasy this evening, Petronius. <laughs> oh, not at all. I felt it was an insult to include your name in such an array of bastard gods, but if you consider it important, I'm more than willing to make amends. You know who I am this evening? I am the god of bass players! Well, the highest. As always. You mean I cheat? No, no, never. I meant that you cast a spell on the dice. Too simple, unworthy of you. The dice heed your voice, Caesar. Mm. What have you to say, Paizo? There's very little to say, Caesar. One either wins or one loses. And since it is impossible for you to lose, you win. <laughs> Now you know how a sincere flatterer talks. Your voice, in comparison, sounds dull. You seem tired to me, Petronius. Like Seneca, who hasn't shown up at the palace as of late. Am I to be denied your company also? No, I shouldn't think so. Petronius is too in love with life to risk offending you. Who is your god, Lucan? My god. After Nero. <laughs> Nero. <laughs> Excellent. You recoup at once. It's difficult to beat Petronius. How can I lure dear Papaya from her silence? What makes you suddenly remember that I am here too? Careful, Petronius. <laughs> Your presence is always deeply felt, I assure you, Divine One. I was only curious to know the name of your god. You can choose. There are many of us who are gods. Caesar, you yourself. And perhaps Marcus Vinicius. Stop, I've had enough of gods. Besides, religions bore me. If the people wouldn't take it so badly, I would send all the priests straight into the arena to the lions, and I would raise all the temples to the ground. I have no god but myself. Um, Tribune. Petronius told me you have something to tell me about my statue <clears throat> on a Parthian border, correct? Yes, Caesar. There's a statue of you painted and dressed so perfectly it gives everyone the illusion of your living presence. And I saw King Teudates, leader of our enemies, come forward and sacrifice a white and black lamb and then remove the diadem that crowned his head, symbol of his sovereignty, and place it at the foot of your statue. <sighs> Wars are over. Peace at last. It's time to cheer. Hmm? Make way for the litter of noble Petronius. Make way. Make way for the litter of noble Petronius. Make These way. evenings at the palace bore me. I lose sleep. Make way for the litter of noble Petronius. Make way. Make way. I haven't been home before dawn in years. Believe me, Marcus, good and evil don't exist. Enjoy life while you can. That's the only possible salvation. Salvation? You too speak of salvation. Why? Who else does? The daughter of Aulus Plautius. Aulus Plautius? But Aulus has no children? A daughter? Her name is Lyja. Um, she's not his daughter. She's, uh... I don't recall the whole story. It's too complicated. But Lyja isn't even Roman. She's a barbarian from one of those northern races. But you're right, Aulus and Pomponia have raised her like a daughter. Do you know her? I've barely glimpsed her, but uh, perhaps I should get to know her. Any woman who speaks of salvation interests me. Women know how to save man. She speaks of a king born in a cave who's the savior of the world. <laughs> Rome is the world, and no one's about to topple it. Wait, why don't you take one of these women with you? Take anyone you like. Do you like Selika? I caught her looking at you the way Popea was eyeing you earlier this evening. Or would you prefer Fahad, flower of the desert, tigress of the desert, 
I just bought her from Sweet Chrysothemis. Or you could take Eunice, if you like. She tends to my needs, really, but if you like. Would you come with me, Salika? Yes. Is it true that you were eyeing me? You mean the way Papa does? <laughs> <laughs> you would have given me to your nephew like a jug of wine. <laughs> You've forgotten that you're a slave. I can do what I like with you. Is it that you're rebelling against the law? No. <laughs> Who leads a better life than a slave? His food is guaranteed, his work is assured, and his health is protected by uh, illustrious doctors. Otherwise, a slave decreases in value. That's it? Huh? That's what I should have Tremalkin say in the banquet scene. Remind me to jot it down when I begin writing tomorrow. A slave has no responsibilities, doesn't have to make any decisions, no politics, no wars. A master even provides a husband or a wife, and sometimes a good inheritance. What more could anyone want? The freedom to give all that up. <laughs> but you have that too. You can die whenever you like. But Eunice, if you do remember one thing, I shall never forgive you. Go now and get some sleep. Go. <laughs> Listen. That sound. A player. Who's making music at this hour in my house? You come back at dawn, but he torments us for hours on end. Every now and then he stops. And then he starts again. How strange. You know, he doesn't play badly. Maybe he's a slave who doesn't know his worth as a musician. The sound doesn't come from the slaves' quarters. Oh? It's like the flute of Orpheus that played when something was about to happen. A sign or a summons. Maybe a warning. Perhaps just a thought that brings sleep. Good night, you. May the gods protect your sleep. Thank you. I was expecting you. Oh? As one does the nameless soldier who always comes back. To gaze once again on the maiden made of ice and stone. <laughs> I speak of things that are foreign to you, don't I? I'm not Roman. Did you know that? Yes, yes, I was told. Then where do you come from? I was born in a far-off country. Where the white trees grow, in great snow-covered forests. That's all I remember. That and a story, a fairy tale my mother used to tell me. A little bit each day, about a maiden, imprisoned in a block of ice, who sees a soldier. 
She would like to cry out to him and ask to be freed. She can't because of the ice. And so... And so he breaks the ice and sets her free, right? I don't know. <laughs> you don't? My mother died before she had a chance to tell me the ending. The war? Yes, the war. I was just six years old when I was handed over to the Romans. As a hostage. As a pledge of peace. If my people crossed the borders imposed on them, I could be killed. Even today at any moment. No, no one remembers that treaty anymore. Besides, today Rome is at peace with the rest of the world. You want to buy a mosaic? What? I need money. <laughs> I thought you were making it for yourself. I was. But when I saw you, it occurred to me that you might buy it. Aren't you rich? <laughs> no. Not as rich as your family, to be sure. My uncle's rich. As for me, I inherited some land far away from here and... Now that I think about it, I'd rather not sell the mosaic. Bye. No, wait. Lyja, wait. Perhaps I can find the money. I need time. If you can spare a little time... Would you give it to me anyway? Even without the mosaic? Yes. But it would be a loan, not a gift. And what if I didn't pay the debt? In Roman law, if someone fails to pay a debt, he can be declared a slave to his creditor. How many slaves do you own, Marcus Vinicius? None. <laughs> but if I find the money, can I at least know what it's for? One day, perhaps, I'll give you the mosaic as a gift. of this monstrous birth among the royal herds is hereby drawn up for conservation in the public register. By order of the emperor, we must ascertain if there exists in the Sibylline texts an interpretation of said phenomenon, which popular belief considers as being ill-omened. According to the priestesses, the simultaneous apparition of two heads on the same body is a sign that some hidden force is seeking dominion over the whole world. Why have you stopped? Let's see the monster, Tigellinus. When shall you reach Corinth? Ten days before the feast of Isis. Once in Corinth, you must seek out the scrivener, Tertius. He is a brother. Go to him without fear. Ask him to take you to Paul of Tarsus. Hmm. <clears throat> Tertius, the scribe, in Paul of Tarsus. Tell him Mark is hard at work, that he's working to recall the words of our Lord Christ, together with our elder brother, Peter. The Lord be with you, Ephraim. Thank you, Mark. The words of Jesus shall not be lost. Come. So, calling the multitude together with his disciples, Jesus said to them, If any man here will follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Good. And for whosoever will save, his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his own life for my sake and the gospel shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world 
and suffer the loss of his soul. Tribune, would you know what this ingenious mechanism is for? I would say a machine for measuring time. A gift from the citizens and the council of Bononia as a sign of gratitude for Caesar's generous aid after the earthquake. But others are plotting in secret. I know it. I can sense it. And I know who they are. Every last one. The people love you, Caesar. How can you doubt it? Oh, people love me so long as their bellies are full. Isn't that so? The Senate is my enemy, not the people. The Senate's the beast. That snake. Only yesterday, a voice was rated against me. Someone accused me in the Senate. Someone cried out that my expenditures, my expenses are excessive. Imagine. My expenditures compared to what? A man who talks that way wants his emperor dead. Babylus said the same thing. He consulted the stars, but where the enemy among friends and a false virtue, it seems his prophecy is coming true. Now even you. You should love your emperor, but you deal with those who would hate me. I've always tried to be a loyal soldier. Mm. What do you know of Aulius Plautius? That he fought in Britannia and won. Yes. But now in the Senate, he's the one who accuses me of excessive expenditures. Typical mania of a conservative old soldier. We know that on your way home from the front, you stopped at his house. Isn't that right? Why? I was paying a visit. Not to him, though, to his daughter, Elijah. A daughter? Yes, I hadn't seen her in three years. Your commanding officer, Corbulo, might have given you a letter. A message for Aulus Plautius. No, there was no message. But you're the only witness? Couldn't you testify that Aulus and Corbulo are in close touch for the purpose of conspiring against Caesar? Eh, hey, Tribune? I'm very disappointed in you, Tigellinus. Slander is an art. Despite your obvious lack of any artistic talent, who would believe the word of a Tribune against that of two generals? <laughs> Enough. I'm tired. Stay well away from the house of Aulis. You deserve someone far better than the daughter of a general who was out of favor with Caesar. The life and honor of your wife depend upon the rigor of your judgment. Rome's magistrates have accused your wife, Pomponia Gracina. It is your right to judge her as head of the family, respecting the precepts of ancient Roman dictates. The judge, finding the accused guilty, shall use this knife without hesitation, or proclaim her free if she's innocent. Tigellinus has charged you with the crime of atheism and iniquity. The law of Rome punishes by death those who scorn the gods and fail to offer them the necessary tribute. You are accused of never having broken the oaten bread in honor of Caesar and of never witnessing the sacrifice of the bull in the temple of the Tarpeian Jove. It was also said that no one has ever seen you cross the field of the King Tarquin on your knees, nor seen you follow each year the procession of the Roman women as they immerse the image of the Great Mother in the Tiber. We have lived a lifetime together, side by side, Aulus. That should be enough to enable you to judge me. I have never found the words. I've never known how to ask you why it is you don't do honor to the gods of our city. And so the charge now forces me to ask it. I beseech you, 
help me to save you. I'm an old man now. But I'm afraid of losing you. They accuse me in order to strike at you. Nero wants to destroy you. You saw that I swore upon my honor to decide in accord with justice. You must answer me, Pomponia. What god do you believe in? In what temple do you sacrifice? Tell me at least that you believe in, in a god. I believe in a god without temples. Our person is the temple of the God of Light. Our thoughts addressed to him are the sacrifice that he accepts. Do you understand that, Aulis? You speak to me of a God I, I do not know. I hear the truth. Thus, I can decide according to justice. I hereby declare this woman, innocent. Slaves with living colors of the sea and the sky and the door. You can have one for a few sesterces. Why for did you yourself, want to see me? To give you this oh, money. My pay is a soldier. What's left of it? For the emperor, to whom I send Don't you remember? You needed money. I also remember what you said. If I find it, can I know what it's for? You cannot know, so I can't accept it. I like what you have done, and I'm happy to see you. slave I saw in your house, isn't he? Yes, sir, sis. But he's not a slave, neither mine nor of my father. He was a warrior who always followed my father, protecting him, ready to give his life if necessary. When I was handed over to the Romans, he offered to come with me voluntarily. He's watched over me since I was born. You were raised by an ox. The two brothers who founded this city were raised by a wolf. Or am I mistaken? Ah, I see you know the legends of Rome. <laughs> some money and be generous. <laughs> Is he working for you? He's working for those who have no food and no place to sleep. There's public assistance for these cases. Only for you, Roman citizens, not for foreigners. Offering? Thank you. Ursus thanks you for your offering. Wait here. Ursus, the strongest man in the world.
I may have to go away. Did you know that? No. No, I didn't. Because Alice and Pomponi are going to retire to the country. They can remain no longer in the city. I heard what happened, but I don't understand why. There's little to understand. Anyone who fails to applaud the Emperor is an enemy of Rome, that's all. Are you sorry I'm leaving? I'm going back to my country. If I manage to reach it, who knows? The law is against me. What do you mean? If you denounce me publicly, I could be arrested. But I trust you. I know you won't harm me. You're the first man I kiss, Marcus Vinicius. Elijah. No, don't follow me. Don't come looking for me anymore. But... Nigel, wait! Goodbye! They want that I die, Elijah. They want me dead, as a senator, as a soldier, and as a Roman citizen, it is Nero's will. I led four legions into Britannia and defeated the sons of Cuna Bellinus at Kent. Total victory lay open to me, but I waited by the Thames for Emperor Claudius to arrive claim the triumph in his name. I have always paid homage to my sovereign, as I do now to Emperor Lucius, Domitius, Enobarbus Nero. Uh, read the whole piece back to me, Eunice. In this way, love strikes even the gods. Go on. Not finding in heaven an object worthy of his love, even Jove descended to the earth and sinned. For love's sake, Apollo turned the youth's spirit into a flower. Hmm. Yes. All the ancient fables speak of love. Where's Marcus? Why isn't he here having supper with me? Marcus doesn't want to see anyone. Why not? You know very well why. Knowing isn't always understanding. Love strikes even the gods. You wrote that yourself. I don't care. I still don't like it. It's too banal, too crafty. It needs to be revised. I need time. What's wrong with Salika? She's sad. Marcus hasn't asked for her anymore. Oh. I have decided on a new title for my book. Oh? Satyricon. Do you like it? Satyricon? I don't know. Perhaps. Eunice, what is it? What's troubling you? Why aren't you going to the palace this evening? What's happened? Nothing. Don't worry about me. Tegelinus isn't powerful enough to ask for my head. Not yet. And tonight, Nero doesn't need me. Go down, he's waiting for you. Come! Me? Go on, hit him with one. He wants to see me. Yes, yes. Oh. No, not you. Over here. <laughs> Don't you? Stop. We have to put her in chains. Ah, you hag! She's locked in the cellar. She's crazy. Ah, don't touch me. Get away. You disgust me. She's below. We have to tie her. I'll have you watered. Every one of you. Don't listen to her, Caesar. She's mad. Miriam? Miriam. Look at me. 
Ah, what is all this nonsense? Well, speak up. He says the last will be first, and he promises eternal peace. He? The last will be first, and he shall Who? raise the dead. Shall raise the dead. Who raises the dead? When his kingdom comes, there'll be no sorrow or sickness or fear. His kingdom will come. His kingdom. And all men will be equal. His kingdom. Who is this Christ that threatens my rule? Hmm? No one here threatens your rule, Caesar. Hmm. No one. Yours is only an opinion, Padanius. But I want to know who this Christ is. Search. Question. Bribe people. You're the prefect of Rome, aren't you? Do your job. The noble Petonius! Were you frightened to be summoned here at dawn? Surprised, Caesar. Where were you last night? You're never here when I need you. I shall confide in you something I've never told anyone else. My mother used to say that a serpent had saved me. From Messalina who'd sent assassins to strangle me. She feared me, her rival, for her son, Britannicus. I was barely a month old. I was asleep in my cradle. And the murderers were reaching towards me. When a serpent appeared, from under the pillow, and made them run off. Here it is, the snakeskin. Found in gold. It will always protect you, my mother told me. Yes, Petronius. I grew up beside death. And where I go, death pursues me. I have to defend myself. Defend myself from the gods, from man, from prophets who call back the dead, from everyone. Even from you, Petronius. For no serpent will appear again to save me. Take it. It's yours. For having listened to my story. This is not the gift I'd want from you. I am. I am ready. It is not you we have come for, Aulus Porius. We have been ordered to escort Lygia Kalina to the Imperial Palace as hostage of the Emperor of Rome. 